All right, on to local matters now. And Florida's Republican nominee for governor is facing scrutiny for using the term monkeying something up. Are you familiar with that term? He was referring to or at least talking about his African-American Democratic opponent. Here's what he had to say earlier during an interview on Fox News. We've got to work hard to make sure that we continue Florida going in a good direction. Let's build off the success we've had on Governor Scott. The last thing we need to do is to monkey this up by trying to embrace a socialist agenda. Well, spokesperson for Ron DeSantis' campaign addressed the comment, writing, quote, Ron DeSantis was obviously talking about Florida not making the wrong decision to embrace the socialist policies that Andrew Gillum espouses. To characterize it as anything else is absurd. Well, Gillum won an upset in last night's primary, edging out the establishment favorite. The Bernie Sanders back candidate is also Florida's first black nominee for governor by a major party. So for more on this, we're joined by BuzzFeed politics reporter Darren Sands. And Darren, I think I'm just going to start okay. with this phrase that he used. Um, sensitivity needed yeah. here? Yeah, I think it's an obvious racist trope mm. that's been used in politics before. Um, I think the DeSantis campaign knows that. Um, the Democratic governors have come out recently um, this afternoon basically saying that this is a new low for Republicans in mm. Florida um, and that uh, this is something that, you know, Republicans are going to have to, to own. Um, the DeSantis, you know, campaign, as you read, just said, you know, this is not something that we think is, you know, obviously we're talking about, you know, his socialist policy. Right. But the, you don't buy that well, the explanation? Well, the problem is that in Trumpism, like one of the main tenets is basically that they want to fight these culture wars in a very specific way. And right. so they knew exactly what they were doing here. And I think it looks like a rehearsed line from DeSantis, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. And so I think... Mm -hmm. Fighting um, these battles in sort of a, in a cultural way, I think, sets up exactly how they want to fight. So let's talk about Gillum. Sure. Um, it, the polls did not indicate that he was going to win. This was shocking for, for a lot of people. Yeah. And, you know, the thing about him is that in terms of his platform, he's pretty left-leaning. Um, Bernie Sanders uh, th thanked him. Bernie Sanders backed him. Tell me a little bit more about his platform. Um, well, right. He um, supports the $15 minimum wage. Um, he um, supports the Medicare expansion that Stacey Abrams, for instance, has pushed for in Georgia. Um, they're um, supporting um, all sorts of uh, different policies, but one of the big things... is um, two big things is actually is marijuana um, he's um, supports full legalization hmm. um, so obviously Florida is like a long way from getting that done but he also supports um, the amendment four on the Florida ballot this November which is basically 1.5 million ex felons getting the chance to vote so that's going to be a big I think galvanizing point for voters there right. voters. And, and we'll see how it all sort of shapes up but um, he's a very unique candidate. He's a young guy. Backed by President Trump. Re President Trump sort of patting himself on the back for sending out a tweet and boosting DeSantis' um, uh, poll numbers. And then you have Gillum, you know, backed by Bernie Sanders. These are two extremes. Who's going to represent the middle here? Yeah, I think that's the thing that we're seeing with this sort of new American politics is that there's no real middle. Yeah. Um, I think one thing that the Gillum campaign will do is appeal to moderates by saying, hey, look, from a cultural st standpoint, is this the guy that you want to sort of represent you? Uh, do you believe in equality? And mm -hmm. I think he's, he's going to have help. Mm -hmm. um, those candidates, I think, have all gotten behind him the, in the primary. And so I think he'll have help in that way. But I think there will be a real intention that they, that they take on sort of making sure that people know this is what they're representing and our alternative is a, a more moral, um, politically viable version of politics. Right. Yeah. Um, let's talk about uh, the Senate seat. Governor Rick Scott wants to become a senator. He yeah. wants to take it from the Democratic incumbent, uh, Senator Bill Nelson. Uh, President Trump has endorsed Scott. It certainly, President Trump's endorsement certainly seemed to work for DeSantis. Will it work for Rick Scott? I think, I mean, 
I think it will. Yeah. I think um, lots of people in Florida are already talking about Gillum's um, campaign in the context of it bringing new voters to the process so that Bill Nelson's seat is, is protected. That mm. was something that Gillum was talking about um, in the campaign as it relates to you know, bringing a voter to the process that actually, um, you know, they ordinarily wouldn't get. And so I think it's right. important. I think, you know, Rick Scott is running a campaign very strongly uh, against a vulnerable um, uh, opponent. Right. And so I think all of that stuff is really important. Um, why is uh, Bill Nelson vulnerable? Well, um, I think he's running at a time where, uh, as an older candidate who um, is you know, represents a, an era in, in democratic politics that, you know, lots of the senators that were his colleagues are now, you know, they're not in touch anymore. Right. Folks like Joe Biden um, and Bob Graham, people who I think we associate with sort of a, 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 um, a more moderate style. And, and he's got fans in, in Florida. Yeah. I think it really is about the excitement about of his candidacy and whether that's going to translate into you know to turnout. But I think Gillum's campaign um, helps him with that tremendously. Right. That's what I keep hearing that uh, with fresh blood comes fresh yeah. excitement from the voters. Yeah. Hopefully, um, and as we know, voters don't tend to come out for midterm elections, but they may come out for this mm -hmm. uh, unprecedented turnout in Florida. Yeah. Really unprecedented yeah. turnout. So there you go. Maybe yeah. it's already started, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Florida let's time. talk about some of the issues um, that Floridians are going to be interested in. You know, this um, we're, this is coming on the heels of a shooting very recently um, in Florida at the um, video game co competition there. Mm -hmm. um, the students at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School just went back to school. School safety, gun control, all of these issues are right at the forefront uh, of voters' minds. Um, how important will gun safety and gun legislation be for voters? I think it's going to be one of the main issues. Um, Andrew Gillum ran his campaign on the idea that he um, defeated the NRA as mayor and bringing a lawsuit basically that didn't allow um, uh, people to shoot guns in public parks. And right. so he's made that a big pillar of his campaign in terms of saying that I'm... I'm laughing a little bit because it's, it's sort of surprising <laughs> it's, that you need legislation well, for that, yeah. but yes. Okay. And, and they get that sort of reaction when he brings it up on the campaign trail. Yeah. Um, and so he was one of the people who um, uh, were leading in the rally that they had in Tallahassee with the sort of the Parkland movement and basically communicating that he stood with them yeah. in the march. And then, and, and really, just, I think communicating that he was going to be their champion, um, and he was very sensitive to this idea that he was sort of taking advantage of the moment. He didn't want to, um, to, to sort of um, use politicize that, yeah, to it. politicize it yeah. and make that moment that was really about the children and the kids. Um, he just wanted to really be a partner, and I think he communicated that, communicated that really well. Yeah. And it'll be interesting to see like how that translates into November. Definitely. But, yeah. um, so, what else are Florida voters interested in? Uh, I mean, I think right now one of the big questions is about the environment. Um, mm. There are lots of different people who are really concerned about the Florida's future as it relates to the environment, and yeah. there are activists who are working in this space right now who you might not think you know you'd ordinarily see um, and I think that's just a reflection of like how important the issue is but like who? well I mean you see black activists now like talking about the environment mm -hmm. in a way that um, you don't always hear around the country and I yeah. think that's because Florida has some very specific issues right but I think that um, you're, um, you're, there's there's climate change and the, we were we've been doing stories on the the red tide the Everglades yeah. the everything and I think people have a very sort of intersectional understanding of like how these issues affect you know other things whether it's the economy or, or jobs and things yeah. like that and so and even Gillum has a, an entire platform on that um, that I think is, is appealing to that could I think you know, could appeal to moderates as well. All right. Yeah. Darren Sands, thank you very For much. For sure. Thanks, Anne-Marie.